About 150 miles north of Morton Bay, Captain. Look, I say we put ashore. We never run out of fresh water. The boat's leaking like a sieve and we're being burned by the bloody sun. There are cannibals on that shore, Dodge. Cannibals. Do you think I'm mad? Do you think I'm going to put ashore amongst cannibals? The natives are not cannibals, sir. I know. You want us beheaded and roasted on a spit, Dodge? Is that what you want? You don't put ashore soon, Captain. You'll have cannibals here in your boat. That's no way to speak to you, Captain Yolden. I'm telling you, Brown. A few more days like this, we'll be drawing lots. Not that! What do you mean? Drawing lots? Don't listen to them, Mrs. Fraser. What do you mean? Draw lots? <laughs> it's an old seafaring custom among shipwrecked sailors with no food, ma'am. They draw lots. In what losers? Gets eight. Stop that, you and stop it! You think we're demonic heathens? Stop it! With all due respect, Captain, we're making little headway against this breeze. It might be wise to put ashore till the wind changes. We can look for water, cork the hull. We're starting to ship a lot of water, Captain. Put ashore at the nearest freshwater stream. No one is to leave the beach, do you understand? No one. Brown will take charge of the musket. Then we will put to sea again when the wind changes to the south. now for the wind to change, Captain. For all we know, it could blow up the coast for a year. We are if not we... traveling overland, Dodge. I've told you that twice already. We have a gun, sir, that gets to close to the shore. Shoot game. The boat is leaking like a sieve. We are not going overland. There are savages in that jungle, savages. And we have one musket. Well, we haven't seen any savages, sir. And I'm getting bloody tired of sitting here on this beach. We're staying here till the wind changes, Yildon. Now, thank you not to speak to your captain in that insolent manner. Well, damn you. I'm tired of sitting here eating ship's rations when we could be on the way to Morton Bay. Where are these damn savages he keeps talking about? Where are they? Bloodshed, Bob. We'll hang if there's bloodshed. We'll hang anyway. Not if there's no one but us to tell what happened. There'll be no killing. 
Once we get the gun, they can come with us if they want to. I won't object to Mrs. Fraser coming Shut right. Up, Doyle. There'll be no killing. Every man, jack of them. The mutinous cars. Cannibals. I knew it. I knew it, Eliza. Oh, my God. Keep calm, James. It's quite all right. Keep calm. Oh, oh, Eliza.
他的，得摸耳朵干，别上摸耳。Eli, Eli, Eliza, if, if they should kill me, James, I would like James, you to... don't be ridiculous. I only want your coat. Stop that, you savage! Stop it! It's quite all right, James. He only wants my dress. Stand back, you damned heathen. My wife is not to be subjected to those sort of indignities! <laughs> What a bloody country is this? There are no animals anywhere.
I'm a British sea captain. I'm damned if I'll be ordered about by a savage. Slaves working all day and separated from each other at night time. Still, we're alive. We have food. Food. You call this food? We must try and eat, James. We're going to need all the strength we've got. Stop it! In the king's name, stop it! 
Whoa. 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 Haven't these uh, damn savages got any respect for marriage, Braceful? Hmm? Well, yes, sir, they have. A lot. The trouble is, nobody realized that you and Mrs. Fraser were married. Well, there they go, Walt. Her brother? Her father. <clears throat> Graceful. Graceful. You've got to get us out of here. Graceful, listen to me. You must take Eliza and I back to Morton Bay. We can't stand this life much longer. Even if the crew get back to Morton Bay, they'll never tell Fyans that we're alive. Graceful, you are our only hope. I'm not going any nearer Morton Bay than this, Captain. Fyans men caught me, they'd flog me until I died. We'll... We'll speak for you, lad. If, if you do this for us, we'll speak for you. You may even get a pardon. Is that why you came? Partly. <sighs> the nights are getting colder. wouldn't take my advice, would you? Oh, no. I could have sailed you up in a rigged whaleboat and avoided all this. Get those boots up out of the mud, you idiot. You've ruined one pair already. Oh, no. 
You had to go over land. I know why, too. I know damn well why. You thought that if I sailed you up, it might look as if I were the leader of the expedition. Well, we're paying for it now, aren't we? It's a useless effort. Now, get out! Scrub and muck. We're paying for it now. I'm sorry, sirs. Something came over me. We've done our duty. We've made our point. For God's sake, let's at least have the sense to turn back before these damn leeches drain our last drop of blood. The captain and Eliza are dead. There can be no doubt of it. I'm sorry that someone got to say it. John! Oh, my God! Spare me, sir! I've nothing against black people! Nothing! John, it's me, Davy Bracefell. Bracefell? Why, Christ, Davy, you scared the wits out of me! Quiet, John! What's happened to you? Never mind about that. Just listen. Tell Fiance that he can hunt for as long as he likes and he won't find me. But if he's willing to grant me a pardon, I can supply him with something he'd be pleased to have. We're not out here chasing you, Davy. We're looking for Captain Fraser and Eliza. Their ship was wrecked and... Yeah. Yes, I know that. And I know where they are. They're alive? Yeah, they're alive. They're living with the blacks, same as me. Tell Fires that if he'll guarantee me a pardon and swear to it in front of three other men, then I'll fetch Fraser and Eliza for him. You'll bring them here? Yeah. I can have them here by tomorrow. I've learned the language of the blacks, how to hunt, travel. So tell Fiance what I've told you, and come back here with this decision before dark. Oh, John. Make sure you come by yourself. Because if he tries to trap me, I'll be off into the bush and I won't be back again. All right, Davy lad. I'll do that. I'll do that. Well, Davey, me lad, your troubles are over. If you can bring Fraser and Eliza back here, you'll get your freedom on the spot. Did he swear to it in front of the others? He did. He did. Why are you carrying that load on your back? Oh, I'm coming with you. Fiance thought I should bring some food and clothes for the Frasers. All right. If we hurry, we should get to them before daybreak. It's all right, sir. Huh? Huh? It's all right. It's me, Bracewell. <laughs> the rest of the rest. 
rescue party had given up, but I convinced them to allow me to strike into the bush alone. I came upon Bracewell at the edge of the natives' camp. Oh, thank God for your fortitude, Graham. Ah, well, you've been an ill-used man, sir. I'm glad to help you. Ill-used? What do you mean, ill-used? Ah, oh, nothing, sir. Nothing. David, after we get back to Sydney, would you still want me? But Eliza... In two days' time, you'll be free. You'll be a pardoned man. I shouldn't have spoken, sir. I'm sorry. Tell me, Graham, what are you referring to? I'd rather not say, sir. The man's degenerate. What man? Openly and loudly boasting of a liaison with your wife. Eliza, leaving your husband would be enough to ruin you, but taking up with a pardoned convict. I can't live with him any longer, David. We could go to New Zealand, no one would know. Do you still want me? Oh, yes, damn it, I do. We'll go to New Zealand. McBride. Openly boasting. He's with a rescue party. Drunk most of the time and telling disgusting... God, I thought you meant Bracefell. Bracefell? McBride. Openly boasting. They'll pay. Both of them. If only I had a pistol. above your head, Bracewell. You're coming down with us. James, David's to be pardoned. Pardoned? Huh. Move on ahead, you blackguard, or I'll shoot you on the spot. Graham! Bracewell. As James's brother, I am legally entrusted with the boy's care, but if I am not sure that you can provide for him adequately, then I cannot let you have him. We're only thinking of the welfare of the boy, Eliza. Believe me, I know how you must feel, but the boy's interests must be paramount. When this unfortunate attention that you're receiving at the hands of the press has abated, then perhaps you will marry again and establish yourself as secure. Until that time, the boy remains with us. And if I were not to marry again, what sum of money would you consider necessary for me to adequately provide for my boy? Money? <laughs> Where would you have access to money, Eliza? Gentlemen, six pence. 
Sixpence is all you need. You hear the widow of the late Captain James Fraser tell from her own lips the story of the most incredible, the most celebrated shipwreck of our time. I could do nothing. As day after day, I watched the savages consume the crew, one after another. Did they boil them first, miss? Yes, I'm afraid so. First, my poor husband, Captain Fraser. Did they scream when they was put in the water, miss? Terribly. Questions at the end, please. Let Mrs. Fraser continue. Then Brown, then the crew. I thought at first that I was to be last. But no. An even worse fate was in store for me. The tribe began preparing for some sort of ceremony, the purpose of which I did not at first comprehend, until, with a sickening jolt, I realized that I was to be forcibly married to the cannibal chief. After a ceremony lasting three days and three nights, I was borne to the chieftain's tent, there to await him. Through a chink in the wall, I saw him striding towards me, huge, black, powerful, and menacing. And in his eyes, I saw a fire that would brook no resistance. Was he naked, miss? Questions at the end, please. Although there was nothing but the vast reaches of the forest around me, I took my courage in my hands and fled. Alas, ere I had gone in fifty paces, he saw me and gave chase. Nearer and nearer he drew. And just as I had begun to give up all hope of rescue, out from the reaches of the forest stepped. Captain Rory McBride! What arrant nonsense, man! This is disgraceful! You're imposing on the public in a most indefensible manner! Who are you, sir? Rory McBride was nothing but a dissolute rake without the courage of a field mouse. The only cannibalism during the whole incident was perpetrated by members of the crew on each other. How dare you impose on the public in this way? How dare you? Who are you, sir? By what right do you dispute with Mrs. Fraser the events which took place on Great Sandy Island last year? I have lived in that area. You have? Were you present when those events took place? Oh, my God. What is your name, sir? My name is Green. Alexander Green. I first heard of the story when I was shipwrecked amongst the aboriginals of Morton Bay. Shipwrecked? Morton Bay? Yes, I spent some weeks in that area before I was rescued by an American whaling ship. Liar! I know who you are. You're the convicted felon, David Bracewell. You have the wrong man, I assure you. My name is Green. Eliza. Eliza, why are you telling this ridiculous story? Thank you. 